In this example, we are going to look at a contaminated steel. Sometimes we transport a radioactive elements inside a container where we put thick, thick wall of steel. Okay, something that looks like this. It looks like Tupperware. Lunchbox, but for radioactive particles. In this question, we have a process where a radio a nuclear reactor is decommissioned. And this much steel is found to be contaminated with nickel-63. Maybe it is the wall of the nuclear reactor, maybe it's a containment, maybe it's part of the factory, okay, or the reactor. So total activity of the steel due to nickel contamination is this much. Okay, I'm just going to label these values. This is mass M. This is the activity A. Calculate activity per unit mass. Ah, miss, just divide only. Oh, apparently, yes, no. A divided by M. So, activity times 10 to the power of 14. Please at least show this one, okay? 2.5 times 10 to the power of 6. So, 1.7 divided 2.5. Get 0 0.68. So, it's 6.8 times 10 to the power of 7. Okay, so this much decay, remember Becquerel is number of decay per second. So you get this many nucleus decaying in one second for every kg of steel. You have a one kg block of steel. This number tells you if let's say this is a one kg block of steel. In one second, like, like this, one second, 6.8 times 10 to the power of 7 of nickel has radiated. Okay. A lot, yes. Talking about particles, of course, a lot. What? B. Special storage precautions need to be taken when the activity per unit mass due to the con due to contamination exceeds four hundred becquerel per kilogram. Nickel sixty three is a beta emitter. And the half life is ninety two years. Wow, so long. Maximum energy of an emitted beta particle is 0 0.067 mega e volt. So this is per reaction. When we say per reaction, this means it is per nucleus. Okay. Using your answer in A to calculate, use your answer in A to calculate the energy in joule release per second. So we kind of want to look for energy release per second in the mass of 1 kg of steel due to the radioactive decay of nickel. All right. So a lot of information. But I think in this part, uh, we are not talking about the contamination first. We are trying to find how much energy is released in one second. So previously, we calculated already the activity per unit mass is this much. So A over M tells us the number of reaction or the number of decayed nuclei per second in 1 kg per kilogram, which was 6.8 times 10 to the power of 7. All right. So we know one nucleus releases this much energy. So hence, and then everything is the same. Uh, everything is the same. 1 kg, 1 kg per second, per second. So hence, the energy release per second. Just multiply them. So in one second, I get this many nucleus reacting for the same amount of mass. Aya, uh, it's when they trick you and they go and put this one as 500 gram or some other mass that you need to do ratio. Now. But now everything is correct. Ma. One second, one kg. So everything is the same. Good stuff. So 6.8 times 10 to the power of 7. And then this thing will multiply by 0 0.067 mega e volt. So mega evolt needs to be converted to joule. 
which I think is also what this question is us testing you for 0 0.067 and mega EV mega is 10 to the power of 6 okay E volt is times 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 okay this E volt is this much joule okay, la. then we can press our good friend Casio the calculator 6.8, 0 0.067, negative 90. So that would give us 7.2896, 7 7.29 times 10 to the power of negative 7. It may feel very meh, but don't forget this is for one kg. So it's not like this little amount of energy will not be able to increase the temperature of this thing much. Lah. Because we are assuming, we're making the assumption that all this energy is converted to heat. Okay. So using your answer, suggest with a reason whether the steel will be at high temperature or not. So you can say 7.29 times 10 to the power of negative 7 joule per kg of steel is too small even if all release energy is converted to heat steel will not be warm okay why well, is it just one mark so the idea is you mentioned that this is a very little amount of energy. It's too small. Quantity of energy. Too little energy. Okay, next. Determine, okay, part three. Use your answer in A to determine the time interval before special storage precautions for the steel is not required. So if you are using my handouts, uh, I did not crop part 3. So you just copy the sentence. Lah. It's a very short sentence. Should include it in the next time. Okay, so it will be safe if the activity per unit mass is 400 becquerel per kg. So safety is achieved when A is equal to 400 becquerel per kg. So what I need now is A0 and half-life. Once I have A, A0 and half-life, I can solve the exponential equation. Okay, as you can see from previous example. So if you need a bit of help, think of X is equal to X0. You can find this expression in the first page of your exam, the formula sheet. But now we are going to use A is equal to A naught E negative lambda T. Okay, so we can find lambda from half-life. Okay, let's do one by one. Let's go and find A naught first. What do you think A naught is? Okay, so we scroll up and then you can see this is the activity per unit mass. There, this one. So it's 6.8 times 10 to the power of 7 becquerel per kilogram. Activity per unit mass. This is also activity per unit mass. So it's starting off when this thing first started, when it was first contaminated, the activity of the steel is this one. For this many kg. Take and divide this one. I'll get 6.8 times 10 to the power of 7. So this is by... A0. Okay, I'm going to put it here. A0 is 6.8 times 10 to the power of 7 becquerel per kg. So we are treating this as a sample of 1 kg. Why? Uh? Because we cannot test the whole tank. We can only take a part of the tank to test. Alright, so now half life is lambda over ln long, 2 over lambda. Sorry. So lambda is ln 2 over half life. Okay. So right now, we're going to put in 400 here. A is 400. 
A0 is 6.8 times 10 to the power of 7. Because initially, when we started this process, when the contamination was detected, you get 6.8 times 10 to the power of 7. And then the next one is E, negative. Lambda is ln 2 over half-life. So I guess, with your permission, I am going to substitute here. Ln 2 over half-life. What's the half-life again now? Ah? Okay, hang on. We go and hunt. Don't worry. Don't worry. 92 years. Okay, so I'm going to bring this one over to divide. 400 over 6.8 times 10 to the power of 7 is equal to e to the negative. Ln 2 over 92 years. Okay, ln 2 over 92 years times t. Okay, let's continue. Bring the exponent over. Exponent brought over is ln. Ln 400 over 6.8 times 10 to the power of 7. And this one will be equal to negative, <clears throat> negative ln 2 over 92 times t. Okay, so I'm going to press my calculator a bit. Okay, ln 400 over 6.8 or 7. This will give me negative 12.0. Negative ln 2 over 92 times t. You might be thinking, miss the 92 need to convert. Ah. No need. Because you see this one is years. And 92 is also years. No need. Okay. So I'm going to bring the 92 over and divide. So times 92 divided by ln 2. So t will be equal to 1598 or 1599. Plus 1 is 1.98.5. Yes. 1600 years. So the note here is if this 92 is years, this t will be years. Because you are not actually looking for a value of lambda. <laughs> so in this case, the unit cancels conversion not needed. Then you may be thinking, Miss, when do I need to convert my lambda or my half-life into second? So I'm going to write a note here for you. Conversion is only needed, only convert if the units don't cancel. Or let's say, for example, you use A is equal to lambda N. This one is in Becquerel. And Becquerel is SI. So if one person is SI, everybody got to be SI. That's how the world works, right? If one, one, if one of the units is SI, then the rest of the units will be SI. So this one has to be SI. This one also has to be SI. I mean, number of particles, no point in SI now, but I think you get the idea. Okay, so just make sure that you convert, especially if you involve Becquerel. If you look here, the Becquerel cancels out because I took 400 divided by 6.8. Okay, and another hint here is because these two units will cancel out because law, nah, exponent, all don't have unit one. So when you use the power of exponents, the unit will cancel out. So these two will be years, no? Okay, there'll be a shortcut for you. If not, then you will convert everything to second, find time in second, and then convert everything back to years. And I want to avoid that conversion. Okay, so that's it for this question. We have to wait very, very long before the steel can be used again. So oftentimes, this contaminated steel, we will put it inside a pool of water so that the radiation doesn't escape very far away, or we bury it underground. All right, so that's it for this example. I hope you learned something. All the best for studies of your A2. Share the video with your friends. Let's ace A2 together. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.